Last night in Hollywood, the creators of South Park celebrated the beginning of their 10th season. Their show has been vilified as crude, disgusting, even nihilistic. I have a stillborn fetus growth attached to my head. It's also been a gold mine for Comedy Central. And the willingness of creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker to take on every sacred cow is the reason for its success. One of the other reasons South Park finds itself in the headlines is because unlike animated shows such as The Simpsons, which take months to produce, South Park is turned around in a week. It allows them to be very topical, as with the episode featuring the character Kenny in a vegetative state. Amazing, Doctor. Which first aired the week Terry Schiavo died. You want a daughter? We can actually keep Kenny the Tomato alive for years. That episode won an Emmy. How does the process work? Let me just tell you probably how I picture the okay. process. You guys sleep in, maybe like, maybe like 2 p.m., you roll into the writer's room, you do huge bong hits. Yeah. With <laughs> That's you and what all, people think. You and your, all your college friends, yeah. you order pizzas, and then you just start like watching cable TV and throwing crap on the wall. That's what people think. It's like we, we have... do order pizzas. <laughs> in fact, the process is grueling. A six-day dash from brainstorming to airtime. After the writers huddle and come up with the plot, Parker sits down and writes the scenes. He and Matt Stone do most of the voices. Hey, you guys, did you see Nightline last night? Dude, shut up. You don't watch Nightline. Yeah, I do. I'm totally cute. The voices are okay. speeded up to make them more kid-like. Hey, you guys, did you see Nightline last night? Dude, shut up. You don't watch Nightline. Yeah, I do. I'm totally cute. In the edit room, the voices are then synced up with crude sketches, then with better animated drawings. Yeah, I do. I'm totally cute. The editor, Keith, will take the sound and, and the, the pictures and put them together. So then, usually about two hours after I write a scene, I can come in here and play with it, video and audio. The Guess Clothing Company is pleased to have as its new spokesperson and model, a woman all you young ones can look up to, Miss Paris Hilton. The fast-paced process allows the show to react not only to events in the news, but moments in the culture. One day I walked into a guest jeans and there she is, you know, on big modeling guest clothing and these little 12, 13 year old girls looking up at it. That's the worst thing you can say to a little girl is, this is great. And when Paris Hilton would say, this is great. That, I don't care what anyone says about what we've done. We've never done anything that's going to mess up a kid as bad as that does. So that was the point of that episode. A point many social conservatives would applaud, as some of them have. There's even a book called South Park Conservatives. We would love to think that we could control a group of people and take over the country as a new political party. <laughs> You're who the new soccer Who, would, who yeah. wouldn't yeah. want that? Yeah. <laughs> what are your politics? Well, they're, they're not very... South Park. Yeah, they're South Park, but they're, <laughs> they're, not, South Park they're not very... Yeah, we're, we're the only South Park Conservatives, actually. <laughs> South Park and their 2004 Team America World Police constantly take on liberal celebrities. Parker and Stone say they're not really conservatives, it's just more rebellious to lean right in the liberal enclave of Los Angeles. We will persuade everyone to drive hybrid cars and stop smoking. So, who did they vote for in 2004? Bush or Kerry? There's a show called um, Giant Douche versus Turd Sandwich, right? <laughs> and th that that came out right before first the time, election. First time, by the way, that that, that those phrases have appeared. Night <laughs> really? See, we have Giant that all the time. Person. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes they're, they're yeah. But, but again, the there's, first time there's, there's, when people, you know, how'd you vote? It's like. Watch that episode, you'll know exactly who we voted for. And there will now be a school-wide vote between the top two nominations. And the kids are told you have to choose between the giant douche and the turd sandwich. And Stan says, well, you know what? If I have to pick between a giant douche and a turd sandwich, I'm not going to vote. And uh, everyone's like, you're what? You're not going to, how dare you not vote? And even his father is like, how dare you need to, you need to vote. You know, people died for your right to vote. You need to pick between the giant douche and the turd sandwich. But Parker and Stone say their favorite episodes, they just released a Greatest Hits DVD, are not the political ones, but rather the episodes that focus on the children as children. There was a Charlie Brown influence, you know, and just sort of, uh, and, you know, when we first came, when the show first came out, there were a lot of people calling it peanuts on acid, you know, <laughs> it's just sort of like, but... I you know I was a big Charlie Brown fan as a kid, but and I was a big acid fan. So yeah, so put them together. Great taste, yeah. Great together. <laughs> but uh, this is how kids talk. This is what you know four little boys do when left alone. This is the things they say. So it was like just this kind of 
honest portrayal of, you know, there's the peanuts and that's nice and cute and everything, <laughs> but here's how kids really are. I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenement Chili. And Cartman being the ultimate version of that, which is just completely self-serving, which most kids are. And, uh, you know, that... Cartman's a little more evil than the average kid. I, I don't think so. A little I, more. I think, I think most kids are about that. <laughs> Do you really think that? Most kids no. are... No, they're more like Kenny and, yeah, they're more and like Kyle. Kyle and, yeah. They're okay. selfish. They're, they're little bastards. Yeah. Yeah. And society makes them better. It's not society corrupts them. See, that's probably the most think, conservative viewpoint. I think have. that's where people feel like there's a conservative thing. But this year, events had them wondering if maybe the world had become so oversensitive, it was time for the show to end. It's not okay to make fun of them. The thing we've stood behind for 10 years is it's got to all be okay or none of it is. Because as soon as you start picking, well, okay, we won't do this, then all of a sudden the ones you did about that shouldn't be okay either. So we were, we were starting to say, I don't know that this is a world that South Park, you know, can live in. After all, in the fictional town of South Park, Colorado, everything is fair game. Everything and everybody. Even the prophet Muhammad appeared in an episode in July 2001. But this year, when Stone and Parker wanted to put Muhammad in an episode, it was after Muslims worldwide had rioted over cartoons of Muhammad in a Dutch newspaper. And Comedy Central told them not to do it. And I'm going to do whatever I can to get that episode pulled before this gets out of hand. If you're going to say, okay, well, then we won't do that, then you shouldn't be able to do that to Jesus. You shouldn't be able to do it to Buddha. Well, it is a weird standard because isn't, in that same episode, don't you have Jesus defecating on George Bush? Yeah, yeah. And that's sort of the that end that point. We did as a point. I mean, that's where we kind of agree with some of the uh, people who've criticized our show because it really is open season on Jesus. You know, we can do whatever we want, we can do whatever we want to Jesus, and we have. We'd have we've had him say bad words. We've had him shoot a gun. We've had him <laughs> kill people. And you know, we can do whatever we want. But Muhammad, we couldn't just show a simple image. And this was like, but that's what's so funny too is like, that so many people then stood behind, like you know, and and actually to Comedy Central's credit, they didn't do this. But so many people were saying. Well, we're not going to do anything with, with Muhammad because we're religiously tolerant. No, yeah, you're not. Right. You're afraid of getting blown up. That's what you're, you're afraid really of getting blown up. That's really the issue, isn't it? Right. At least Comedy Central cop to that. Yeah, you know, said, like, we're afraid of getting yeah, blown yeah. up. <laughs> okay, well, we can't really argue with that. Dude, this is pretty f***ed up right here. South Park's roots are in mocking that which is held most sacred. It began as this short film, The Spirit of Christmas, featuring Jesus and Santa Claus fighting. Go, Santa! Go, they have stayed true to the spirit of that film, <gasps> taking on last season, Tom Cruise. Hey, Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. What? Tom Cruise locked himself in my closet and he won't come out. And Cruise's religious beliefs. You don't actually believe this crap, do you? The powerful and very litigious Church of Scientology. Scientology is just a big fat global scam. Why, why weren't you allowed to rebroadcast that episode? I know eventually they, they decided that you could because the hue and right. the bad press was so much that they figured right. like they were actually it didn't make any sense. Right. But we were told that the people involved with Mission Impossible Three demanded that show be pulled off the air, and it was. Media behemoth Viacom owns not only Comedy Central but Paramount, the studio that at the time needed crews to promote Mission Impossible Three. For one second. Pretend I'm Tom Cruise. Okay. Tom Cruise might say, I'm not gay, and you're implying that I'm gay and I'm living a lie. No, we implied that you were in a closet and you wouldn't come out of it. Yeah. That's all we implied. But does he, does he have no reason to be offended? Oh, he's got total reason to be offended. The thing is, 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 is that he's sued people for implying he's that he's gay. gay. Before. Right, right. right. That's Which is funny. Why? You know what I mean? Yeah. People have implied, we're gay. We haven't sued anybody. I don't give a shit if somebody says I'm gay. That's the difference. That's super funny. Everything's going to be all right. Just come out of the club. Yeah. Are either of you uh, religious at all? No. Depends on what, I mean, I, yeah, I consider myself religious, but it would take me a long time to explain it to you. <laughs> you know, He's been explaining but, it to me for a while. And right? he still doesn't get it. You believe in God? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man? I'm on TV. Yeah. I, I believe there's something going on that we don't know. That's, that's, as, that's as far as I can go. So you know rec I mean? Recently, atheists, have, uh, atheists and people who hate religion have like really glommed onto our show, too, because we make fun of a lot of religion. We've made fun of everything. everything. Yeah. But neither one of us is anti-religious at all. I mean, I'm yeah. fascinated by religion. Because all the religions are super funny to me. And like the story of G, it makes no sense to me. Like, 
God sent his only son. Why can God only have one son and why would he have to die? It's just like the whole story doesn't, it's, it's just bad writing really and it's really terrible in the, about the second act. But, but basically, out of all the ridiculous religion stories, which are greatly, wonderfully ridiculous, the, the silliest one I've ever heard is, yeah, there's this big giant universe and it's expanding, it's all going to collapse on itself and we're all just here just because. <laughs> just because. Like, that to me is the most ridiculous explanation ever. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think we have a big atheism show coming Yeah, just this morning we were talking about an atheism show we could do. We could make fun of atheism. As long as Parker and Stone rule South Park, Colorado, they decide what's funny. This is Jake Tapper for Nightline in South Park.